Hello, welcome back. Today I've got a bit of a surprise. I've got a Xbox One S with no power. Now I've already repaired this Xbox One S. Um, the thing is what I've done was I had a spare power supply here. Put the, put the power supply in, bang, and it turned on. But in the meantime, I've pulled out the old power supply, the non-working power supply. And I'm going to show you the process I use to track faults in switch mode power supplies. Try to break it down into sections. And every power supply is a little bit different, but they're all basically the same structure. And I'll show you what points to check. And we'll see if we can find the fault on this board. Thank you. Back shortly. Uh, welcome back. I've got this Xbox One S slim power supply. Doesn't work. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Well, it's... it's I've broken the power supply down into basic stages, so you don't need to check every single component on this on this on this power supply. You'll be there for months and Sundays, okay? So by basically checking voltages half on different parts of the board, you can isolate where the fault is. Before we start, um, the very first thing we're going to do there is a, a little fuse here. Looks like it's a four amp, two fifty volt fuse. Make sure that's short. Because all fuses are shorter, they go open when they blow, and that reads that reads a short, so that's okay. So we know that's okay. Now we've got our bridge rectifier. Basically, our 240 volt comes in through this bridge rectifier, all right, which is a bunch of diodes, and then comes out the other side. So we can actually, what I like to do is measure out there on the secondary side, which is the two outside points. And see if there's a short on there. And there's no shorts on there. Okay. So that's okay. That's another diode there. We'll just quickly check that one there. Okay. So uh, we can now check if there's voltage up to there. Now it's pretty dangerous. You've got to be careful because it's 240 volts. So unless you're te an electronic technician, I'd suggest you do not do this at home. It's purely educational purposes. But basically every power supply you do will be basically the same format. So we've got that on. AC volts, so 240 volt comes in here into the center of this rectifier and you see we've got 240 volts coming in we have DC coming out and we have DC coming out so already we know all that front end's okay now, let me just turn the power off here you got to be careful here because this big capacitor here can charge up and hold charge. So that's about, uh, I say that's about a, it's a 200 volt, 300 volt capacitor. So it's going to charge up. So we can check voltage through these chopper transistors up to this, up to this capacitor here. Three hundred thirty-four volts. So, all well, that's looking okay. Once again, we go to our output voltage here, twelve. We got nothing. Yuch, mm, nada. So that's gone. So, the most common problem with with a lot of the power supplies is this chopper transistor here, diodes, um, capacitors go shorted. There's another point we can check. Is these opto couplers here? If these opto couplers don't work. They have the voltage coming in, usually about 0.6 a volt, and they have a DC coming out. If there's no voltage coming in, you're not going to get an output. So, so we've got nothing. We've got nothing, so it's looking up around the area there. Turn this off. Now be careful because that capacitor is going to stay charged. That capacitor there. Work out where it pins are. Okay, now that's just charged it. No, it hasn't. Jesus. Now 
that point there and that point there, yeah, then two. Oh yeah, it's covered in, okay, this um, circuit board's covered in like a resin on the back too, so you be careful about that. So we're just going to short this out over here. See that? See how much charge is in there? Quite a bit. Now you'll find, you'll find that because it's charged up, because there's a fault in the board, that's why that's charged up. The capacitor's charged up, couldn't dissipate the voltage anywhere. So any of these power supplies that, are fault, that, uh, that don't turn on, that are faulty, um, just be careful, the uh, capacitors will charge up if there's no no circuitry to, 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 to discharge the voltage, okay? The next thing I'm gonna check is this uh, Zener diode here. The Zener diode, because it said Z1, so it's 100K, that's okay. Okay, so looking around there, now we're looking at the secondary capacitors here. Two capacitors. 55, ooh, that's a bit, that's very too low for my liking. 55 ohms, that's too low. Too, too low, shouldn't be that low. So, those capacitors, the output from, from this device here, which has got a gate grain, gate grain source, that's a FET, FET transistor. Gate grain source, so because if I measure with a multimeter from there to there, that's a sh dead short, so that's the output these by the copper. So this device, these are the capacitors of a crook, or this device here, and that's reading low. Anything that's under pressure in a power supply, that's why these are mounted on a heat sink. The mount on the heat sink for a reason, it's got to dissipate heat. Anything that's under pressure can fail. I'm going to remove this FET. And then we'll see whether, then measure it, and see whether that's, that's the problem. So I'm going to do this, I'm going to loosen this screw, and then I'm going to do it, do it under the microscope, so you can see me desoldering it, okay? And we'll get that out and we'll measure that. So I'm going to go back over to the soldering station, back shortly. Okay, back again. So basically what I've done, I've taken this FET transistor out, I've measured it. And it actually measures, alright, I haven't got the 55 ohms there. Okay. It moves okay. But, I've done it the pretty primitive method, because the average person at home haven't got all these high-tech equipment. Um, so how I've removed it is basically the old-fashioned way, bit of heat, add a bit of solder, bit of, bit of um, flux, pulling it out. Uh, a lot of people haven't got high, hot air guns and all this alloy solder and all this high-tech equipment to, to work with. So I've done it the old-fashioned basic method that I've showed you how, how you do it at home with no tools. Um, I'm still reading 50 ohms. So that 50 ohm could be coming from either these two capacitors. There's a zener here. Which isn't okay. And there's two capacitors here. From this from the positive. So from there to ground. So that's ground. That's positive. That's ground. That's positive. So still reading for James. So 
something's going on that rail there. That could be could be those capacitors, or it could be one of these ceramic capacitors. So I'm going back under the microscope, and uh, we'll have a bit of a look, look at it. Okay, welcome back. So what I've basically what I've basically done is try to work out where this uh, 50 ohms, 55 ohms across the outputs. So anything anything from the 12 volt rail to ground, anything off that rail going back could be faulty. So I've taken out the FET transistor. I've taken out these two capacitors. Still didn't fix it. I've then taken out uh, two capacitors here. Still didn't fix it. Another capacitor here. Still didn't fix it. Another capacitor here, still didn't fix it. Still had, had 50 ohms. So I've worked out that that 12 volt rail comes all the way down here down to this chip, which I've actually ta already taken off. Alright, so I've, I've taken that little chip off. That little tiny chip there. Taken that off. Because this on the rail. 12 volt rail. And now when I get my multimeter, now we'll get my multimeter and measure across the, the positive and negative rail. Alright. 50k. So I've now removed that short or close to ground short off the main rail. So that U601 is faulty. Um, as I said, this is only purely for uh, educational purposes because it wouldn't be viable to spend all this time. But any power supply, you can do the same. You can do the same same thing. Uh, track through. So U601 chip. I'll put it in the description what it is, um, I'll and that's uh, that'll fix that. Back shortly. Yeah, so basically it's the same repair process for basically any power supply. They're all very similar, but you just be got to be careful if, if, if you get any fault on the on the output, uh, any of these big capacitors will, will will charge up, and they'll stay charged. So and you'll get a bit of a zap off them. So uh, not life threatening, but it can give you a bit of a bolt boot. 
Um, so I use any of these power, five watt power resistors, uh, any any resistor will do basically do, put across the capacitor to discharge, discharge it, okay? Uh, and that's the best way to go. So basically, it's it's the same process. Pro, oh, sorry, same process with any any switch mode power supply, game console, TV, any anything that's got a switch mode power supply. You can you can break it down into into, into segments. You don't have to check every component under, under under the sun, and you can break it down, and you can find you can find the fault. Um, as I said, this is educational purposes. Um, it's not viable probably to repair this because you can get them on eBay 30, 40 bucks. So. Um, I just thought it would be a bit of a rundown on, on how we can tr how you track through and find some of these faults. So, all the best. Uh, yeah, please subscribe and thank you very much. And give us a like as well. Thank you.